everyone and welcome back. So today we're actually doing the same kind of labradorite that I just did and showed everybody. And I'm also going to do the setting for you, which is actually really, really easy. So I wanted to show you how I do it so that you guys can do it too, because why not? Um, so let's get started. Um, materials that I'll be using is obviously my little tiny pencil. Um, I have a fine liner for going around and doing the edges. Um, I have my polychromos and we'll go through the colors in just a minute when we're ready for that. And I have my odorless mineral spirits inside my little jar with a sponge. And I have a clean paper stump or tortillion or whatever you want to call it. That's what we have for our supplies. So, let's do it. First, let's get the camera so that it's not fuzzing in and out. Okay, so, I usually just eyeball these things and just see what kind of shape I want to use. I try and get it decently roundish and then I just kind of cement the line by using the fine liner. Okay. If you're bothered by the pencil lines, you can just erase them after that. For the setting, all I do is I eyeball first the bottom, first the top, and where are the sides. Just like that, okay? And then I'll start at the side, and what I'm going to do is go up and bring it around to the top. And then I'm going to go to the tallest sort of part of this and just do it again and bring it around to the top and bring it around to the top. Just like this. I think it kind of creates like this seashell effect. Like that. Okay? And then to make sure your hand kind of remembers that same thing and to make it feel the same way, we turn this around, the paper, and then we do it the same way. That way your hand doesn't have to try and do it backwards, basically. So we go up and all the way to the top one up and all the way to the top one. Just like that and you go all the way around. I'm sure in Zentangle or whatever it has like an actual name or something but I really don't care I'm just doodling so and then to do the next part of it we're going to let's see what did I do ah okay so we turn it sideways and then we'll just start here where we've ended it way over here not at the top dot where we've ended our doodle and we're going to here. So we just go boop, like that. And then we continue doing the same thing basically. Until we run out of room. And then we turn this over. 
and do the same thing again. Should have gotten a little bit higher bump on that one. Boop. Just like that. So now we have our setting. Pretty cool, right? That's easy. I like doing it, you know. And then you can just spread out from there. If you want to do more of them, you know, you could start coming out from the middle of it or something. So, you know, go crazy with it. That's the whole point. Just to have fun. Okay, let's go over colors. Now, when you want to do something that has these, like, lighter areas in it, those are the colors you're going to start with. Because those are the ones that you want to kind of shine through. And you're help, you're using the white of the paper to really help you with that. Um, so, whereas this part of it is only has like one layer of polychromos on it. Whereas like this part of it has like 16 layers. You never know. Okay? So, I have... <clears throat> let's see. light magenta so basically pink light pink um fuchsia which is like super bright pink and then i have let's see light phthalo blue i have middle phthalo blue i have prussian blue and danthrene blue and black and then for the gold, I believe I used, um, oh, we'll just pick a couple of yellows. There's cadmium yellow. I know I used green gold. And then my favorite accent for gold is probably burnt sienna. So we'll put those in there as well. Okay, let's go for it. So, first, we're going to go over here and start with our lightest colors. Always, always, always. Because you can always go darker. You can always go darker. And I want some spots of pink up here. So I'm just going to block in some of this and then probably have like a whole line of pink over here because why not? And just really, really keep this layer light. You just want a really nice little base coat on there. Well, that's like literally all you're going to do really with that. I'm going to take the fuchsia, which is the darker pink. And I'm going to go around it. And bring it out here a little bit. Just wherever you want. Because you're just making color splotches, basically. And then, something I've noticed about Labradorite is that when we do the, um, the veining, the gold veining, um, that's usually surrounded by, like, the brightest part of the blue. So, let's go for that. So, I'm going to do the cadmium yellow first. And I'm just going to go in here and do some little veins. I don't want to do a whole bunch of them. Just like a little bit. And then... Put one like way over here. Just like 
that. And then I'm going to take the green gold and go over and around it. Because we're making this look like gold, right? So we're just going to kind of scribble over it. As you can see, this is super precise. I use quite a bit of pressure with my yellow so that it kind of stays indented. That way we won't lose it as much. So I'm going to kind of go over it with the green gold. And then finish off like the little like, cracks and crevices in the gold. We do the burnt sienna. I can make like go on the edge of it. Go through it a little bit. Because I mean you're really just getting the effect of it. Okay. Like that, and that's pretty much our gold. I mean, that's literally all you do for that. I mean, definitely. If you go to my gold veining, um, it's like a gem or a stone with gold veining. It's on YouTube. Um, that one also has some different tips and tricks if you want to try that out. And now for the fun part, blue. Light phthalo blue. So first we're going to... Go around the gold. And again, light layers as we start doing this because we're going to build it up quite a bit. So I do want to surround the gold with it. And this is why this uh, stone labradorite is so much fun is because you get to just scribble basically and it comes out just absolutely beautiful as you begin to as you begin to really like build up the layers um when you put blue on top of pinks and stuff like that you get purple so it's kind of pretty uh, blue in here Then just wherever else you want blue. I mean, I pretty much want blue everywhere. I love these. How much blue you get to put down. Ta-da! <laughs> it's perfect. Um, <laughs> no, but this is how they start, and they do look pretty ugly at first, but I kind of like it, so it looks like, I don't know, Cotton Candy Factory blew up. Alright, so, now's the magic part where you use the odorless mineral spirits. So you get your clean little paper stump, and I start in the lightest part of the pinks first. And do them and blend them out so that we don't blending the actual colors too much just yet once you've got those blended out then you can start bringing in and mixing it around with the blue and this just gives it a really lovely base and yeah, you can go over the green, or uh, the uh, gold, it's fine. That doesn't have any whites in it. And it gives it that really soft look. Which is awesome. There we go. Okay. So give that just a second. 
because we want to make sure that that's decently dry before we put more stuff on there. Um, we're going to start going into our darker blues. Um, that being Prussian blue right now. And start really starting to bring in some of the depth to the gem. So, I'm going to kind of keep a little bit of a distance in between this blue and the gold. So that we can go in and bring in more of the blue in just a little bit. And this one we want to take and go all the way around with. And you can put little windows in there and do whatever you would like. I'm just trying to start bringing in more color depth to it. The odorless mineral spirits, because it is alcohol based, it uh, evaporates like really quickly. It dries really, really quick, which is really nice. So it is alcohol based, but please don't drink it. Find something way better. Like that and so that's how we begin building the depth and letting kind of the luminescence of the pinks and the lights come through I'm going to go back to the light blue and do it real close to the gold again Like that. And bring it elsewhere if you really want to. And then I'm going to get the light pink. And do some of that in here. Um, it's actually light magenta. Excuse me. Not light pink. I just think of it as light pink. Because you can use whatever color you want. As long as it's a light color. To get the luminescent quality. Alright. And. I'm going to go ahead and blend again. This time you just kind of go over it real quick. You're just wanting it to, the darker blue to fade into the background that you already have. Because you're just building the layers of color. And then we're going to go darker with Indanthrin Blue, which is actually one of my favorite blues in the Polychromos. It's a very rich blue. It's 
and we're just going into here and darkening places. Definitely want to go for sort of around the edges and just really bring that color tone down a little bit more. And see right here where it feels like it's a lot lighter than it ought to be. I'm going to put blue in here. And then to kind of blend in between that darker blue and the lighter blue, we're going to get the middle phthalo blue. And just come in here and just really blend them together. I think it also kind of brings up the saturation of the colors. And then I'm going to get the fuchsia, the bright pink, and go over some of this and around some of these pink spots to do the same thing we're doing with the middle blue, basically, is just bring up some of the saturation of the color. And also, as it mixes with the blue, it's... Um, makes purple. If you prefer to keep it light, you can go with the lighter pink instead. Just like that. And do a tiny bit of blending. You don't want any of this to be like really sharp pencil lines or anything. And now we attack it with the black. Okay. So with our black, we're going to go around and really push in that edge. And begin bringing it up a little bit. Just the, the depth, the darkness. Put some of it in here too, why not? And my cat wants me to play ball with him, so if you hear him meowing, I'm sorry. I'm going to bring this in a little bit because I want some of this to be darker, more mysterious. OK, 
Okay. And I'm going to blend some of this in. And I have not re-dipped this, by the way. Um, I only have to really dip it once and then just ease it from there. Which is really nice. And then I just kind of figure from here, like some of the brightest parts are here. So maybe I want to put the light here or light here. Wherever you feel like it ought to go. I kind of feel like it should go up here. So I'm going to bring a little bit extra darkness over here. And one more blue. Bring some of the dark blue over here as well. And I just go back and forth with where I want to bring the depth and just blend it in so that it's not. If you don't have, you know, blending stuff and whatnot, that's okay. It's not like you have to. You just take your time, be careful, you know, blend it a little bit extra. Where's my black? You'll be good. And then, uh, go ahead and sharpen your black pencil up real well. Because you will need it to be nice and sharp. This needs to be darker. But you want to get it nice and sharp and make sure it is nice and sharp. Because now we do all of our little lines. Okay. So. Labradorite always kind of goes. Almost like a checkerboard. Where it has parallel and vertical lines on it. So. I'm going to make some. Really nice ones on here. Like here. And then do some of them over here. And I'm doing the vertical lines like kind of thick comparatively. And then for the more horizontal lines, what I'm going to do is kind of flick your pencil across there like you can do some of them like really intense and then just kind of flick them and I do them in little groupings and like I want like a couple little lines over here a couple of lines over here Like that and then I think I need another one right there big vertical one yeah And when you're starting in the shadow, you can kind of hold it down a little bit and then just kind of flick it out like that. It gives you a, a little bit of a lighter feel at the end of your pencil. Um, 
line that you're drawing basically so there we have it and all we need now is to highlight it and I've got my jelly roll over here somewhere Let's see if it will work today and I'm just gonna go up here with it follow the curve of my gem Gotta fill in the highlight and I know gel pens are fickle but I really do like them I really do like the look that they give me and then I've got some little extra ones running around over here Just like that and there we have it a glowing labradorite gem i hope you liked it i hope you enjoy it and i hope you go do one if you do i really do want to see it so make sure you do one and do it super fabulous and post it in gem house see you next time bye